Welcome back, movie buffs. Today, we're diving into the world of crime, mystery, and action with the 2016 thriller Jack Reacher Never Go Back. Directed by Edward Zwick and starring Tom Cruise, this film takes us on a thrilling ride filled with suspense, intrigue, and of course, some jaw-dropping action sequences. But before we jump into the nitty-gritty, let's set the stage. Jack Reacher Never Go Back follows the iconic character of Jack Reacher, played by the ever-charismatic Tom Cruise. Reacher, a former military police officer turned drifter and vigilante, finds himself embroiled in a conspiracy when he returns to his old military unit to meet Major Susan Turner, played by Cobby Smulders. What starts as a routine investigation quickly escalates into a deadly game of cat and mouse as Reacher and Turner find themselves framed for espionage and pursued by the authorities. Now, let's talk about what makes Jack Reacher never go back such a thrilling watch. First and foremost, Tom Cruise's portrayal of Jack Reacher is nothing short of electrifying. He brings a perfect blend of intensity, wit, and charm to the role keeping us on the edge of our seats with every move he makes. And let's not forget about Cobby Smulders as Major Susan Turner. Smulders delivers a standout performance, showcasing both her physical prowess and her acting chops. As a capable military officer who can more than hold her own against Reacher, beyond the performances Jack Reacher never go back is packed with pulse-pounding action sequences that will leave you breathless. From intense hand-to-hand -to -hand combat to heart-stopping car chases, this film delivers adrenaline-fueled thrills from start to finish. But amidst all the action, the film also manages to weave in elements of mystery and suspense, keeping audiences guessing until the very end. The twists and turns in the plot will keep you glued to your seat, eager to unravel the truth behind the conspiracy. Of course, no review of Jack Reacher Never Go Back would be complete without mentioning the masterful direction of Edward Zwick. Zwick expertly balances the film's action-packed moments with quieter, character-driven scenes, creating a well-rounded cinematic experience that will satisfy fans of the genre. Jack Reacher must uncover the truth behind a major government conspiracy in order to clear his name while on the run as a fugitive from the law. After accomplishing the assignment of dismantling a human trafficking organization, the former military and drifter Jack Reacher goes to Washington to invite his liaison, Major Susan Turner, to have dinner with him. However, he meets her substitute, Colonel Sam Morgan, who explains that Major Turner has been arrested and accused of espionage. Jack seeks out her veteran lawyer, Colonel Bob Moorcroft, who explains that Major Turner has also been accused of the murders of two soldiers in Afghanistan. After busting a human trafficking ring, former military investigator turned vigilante drifter Jack Reacher returns to his old military headquarters to meet Major Susan Turner, whom he has been working with during his travels and has become his closest friend only to learn from Colonel Sam Morgan that Turner has been accused of espionage and detained. With his successor in the military police and valuable ally, Major Susan Turner. Detained for espionage, the highly trained private investigator, Jack Reacher, sets out on a mission to clear her name. Before long Jack, too, finds himself framed for murder, as not only he and Susan, but also an unknown relative, are caught up in the middle of a dark conspiracy. Run by a nefarious arms trafficking organization, and a pitiless operative known only as the Hunter. Can Jack Reacher unearth the truth and live to fight another day? A small crowd of people is gathered outside a diner. The police arrive and find four men on the ground, beaten up. An onlooker tells the cops that one man took them all on and beat them down within seconds. Sheriff Raymond Wood Jason Douglas and his deputy enter the diner to find Jack Reacher Tom Cruise sitting by the counter with some blood on his face. Wood cuffs Reacher and prepares to take him away until Reacher says that in 90 seconds, the phone will ring. 
and Wood will be wearing the cops on his way to jail for kidnapping and selling undocumented immigrants on military soil. The phone rings, and Wood answers, giving his name. Seconds later, military police cars pull up and arrest Wood. Later, Reacher speaks on the phone with Major Susan Turner Cobby Smulders, who helped him capture Wood, and is surprised to find Major S. Turner is female, he calls back a few times while traveling about and finally mentions he probably owes her a dinner. She agrees, asking when he will be in D. C., and he tells her he will be there, eventually. Reacher arrives at the military HQ in Fine's call. Morgan Holt McCallany sitting at Major Turner's desk. Morgan informs Reacher that Turner has been arrested for possible espionage. Reacher speaks to CTT, leads Madeline Corker to learn who has been assigned as Major Turner's attorney. CTT, Leach informs Reacher she has been ordered to not give out any information on Major Turner's case. Reach then asks what attorney CTT. Leach would recommend to her D. I. If he needed one, catching on, she quickly recommends call. Moorcroft. Reacher finds call, Moorcroft Robert Caprini and asks about Major Turner. Moorcroft tells him they found a hard drive in her house with classified information on it. He, then, brings up a paternity suit filed against the military that claims that Reacher is the father to a daughter from a woman named Candace Dutton. When Reacher asks him what the Major has to, says, call. Moorcroft informs Reacher he hasn't been allowed to see her yet. Reacher leaves and tells Moorcroft to get back to him when he remembers what his uniform stands for. Moorcroft has a change of heart and gives Reacher a file onto soldier, Jibeli M. Serrano and Murkovich Nicole Berry, who were both murdered at close range in Afghanistan. And it is believed that Turner was involved in their deaths. From a distance, Reacher is being watched by a man known only as the hunter Patrick Hoisinger. Reacher follows his supposed daughter Samantha Danica Yerish. After a while, Sam catches on and calls Reacher out for following her. He asks Sam if she is Candace's daughter. Sam thinks Reacher wants her mother due to the knowledge of Candace's previous job as a prostitute. Sam walks away from Reacher. The hunter finds Moorcroft in his home and brutally beats him to find out what information he gave to Reacher before killing him. Reacher returns to the HQ to find Morgan, a few officers, and a lawyer named Elt. Sullivan Jessica Stroop waiting for him. Reacher is accused of killing Moorcroft in his home. He is then taken into custody. When Reacher is detained, he spots some men arriving, knowing they're there to kill him and Turner. He asks Elt, Sullivan to get him a sandwich and then escapes. He takes down an officer named Espen Aldous Hodge and takes his uniform before heading over to Turner's cell. Sure enough, the men are there to kill her. Reacher takes them all down and gets Turner out of there. They are both spotted and chased out by the officers. They make their getaway by stealing a police car. Reacher and Turner get Morgan in his house after realizing he's involved in the scheme. They get their information out of him and leave. Later, the hunter shows up at Morgan's home and beats him to death with his phone, since he knows Reacher's prints are on the phone. He contacts Leech and secretly asks her for help. She informs Reacher that Morgan was murdered and that Reacher's prints were on the phone. Looking through more of the information form call. Morgan's computer, Major Turner finds surveillance photos, including some of Sam. He and Turner go to Sam's foster home and find her foster parents have been murdered. Sam bursts out from under the kitchen sink with a knife in self-defense. Reacher and Turner calm her down and take her away. Reacher and Turner take Sam to a private school, Pembroke, for her protection, since Turner has a connection there. As Sam talks to some of the schoolgirls, she pulls out a phone, which she told Reacher and Turner that she left back at the house. The two pull her away and decide they need to get out of there, and they throw Sam's phone away to remain undetected. 
Reacher gets a call from Leach with information on a man named Daniel Prudham, a specialist in Afghanistan that saw Chabeli and Murkovich get killed. Leach also mentions a company called Parasource, which is a private military firm. The three make plans to head to New Orleans to find Prudham. Sam gets out a credit card from a bag she stole from one of the schoolgirls so that they can buy their plane tickets. On the plane, Reacher spots two contractors from Parasource on the plane. He beats them unconscious and gets information off their phones. On the rest of the plane ride, Reacher pretends to sleep as he overhears Sam talking to Turner about who her father could be. In New Orleans, while riding a bus, Reacher comes clean to Sam that it's possible he's her father. And that's why she's being hunted along with him and Turner. She doesn't believe Reacher's claims until he mentions that Candace filed the paternity suit. Reacher and Turner find Prudham Austin Hebert in an abandoned building full of junkies. After getting tipped off by Prudham's wife, who hasn't seen him in months, Turner interrogates Prudham and he tells them what he knew about Chabeli and Murkovich's deaths, as well as what he knows on Parasource. Reacher and Turner get in touch with Aspen and have him speak to Prudham to learn the truth. As Aspen is escorting Prudham out, they are ambushed by assassins. Prudham is shot and killed, and Reacher jumps in to fight and kill the villains. Reacher also protects Aspen, and they manage to get away. Reacher, Turner, and Aspen meet up with other military officers. At a base to confront General Harkness Robert Nepper, the CEO of Parasource. Turner accuses him of selling arms to insurgents, and that the cases he and his men are unloading are empty. Some cases are opened but, to match Turner's surprise, they actually contain arms. As she is about to be arrested, Reacher goes to an open case and finds opium hidden in the arms, leading to Harkness's arrest. Moments later, Reacher gets a call from the hunter, saying he is going after Sam after she called for room service and used one of her stolen credit cards, and it gets flagged. Reacher and Turner race back to the hotel to save Sam. Sam sees the hunter and his goons going down the street during a Halloween parade, so she escapes the room. The villains chase her through the streets, with Reacher and Turner trying to catch up to them. They kill the hunter's goons before facing him on the roof. The hunter has Sam held at gunpoint and threatens to throw her off. Reacher drops his gun and kicks it to the hunter, leaving Sam. With an opportunity to grab the hunter's gun out of his hand as Turner taught her earlier, Reacher tackles the hunter off the roof. They fight a little while longer, until Reacher breaks the hunter's neck and throws him off another ledge. With her name cleared, Turner is reinstated to her old position. She and Reacher promise to keep in touch and make dinner plans. Sam later finds Reacher in a diner. He is ready to find out whether or not she really is his daughter, but Sam determines that she's not. Since Candace was serving Reacher coffee, and the two of them did not recognize each other. Later, the two bid each other farewell. Sam tearfully hugs Reacher and slips a phone into his pocket. The film concludes with Reacher hitching for a ride down the road. He gets a text from the phone from Sam that asks, Miss me yet? He smiles and sticks his thumb out. In conclusion, Jack Reacher Never Go Back is a must-watch for any fan of action-packed thrillers. With its gripping storyline, stellar performances, and adrenaline-fueled action. This film delivers on all fronts and solidifies its place as a modern classic in the genre. That's all for today's review. If you haven't already seen Jack Reacher Never Go Back, be sure to add it to your watch list. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more movie reviews and analysis. Until next time, stay entertained. I'm a big fan of Tom Cruise. He is a real old-fashioned film star, generous with his fans on the red carpet and with real star power at the box office. And I can happily sit down in front of just about any one of his DVDs time and time again and still enjoy it. Unlike many critics, I even enjoyed his last outing as Jack Reacher. 
Unfortunately, and it pains me to say this, but, his latest outing Jack Reacher Never Go Back is a bit dull. Lee Child's Reacher has many years before turned his back on his military past and wanders the country as a drifter, righting wrongs outside of the law. In this film, his military past again makes a major no, ex major intrusion into his life. Potential love interest Major Susan Turner Colby Smulders, from the Avengers world, is arrested on trumped-up espionage charges, and Cruz sets out to clear her name. Along the way he accidentally and rather too conveniently for the plot, discovers that a paternity suit has been filed against him, and Reacher confronts the rebellious and light-fingered teenager Samantha Danica Yerish, aged 18, playing 15. Unfortunately, the big cheeses involved in the international arms skullduggery are determined to tie up each and every loose end in their intrigue, and that includes Reacher, Turner, and young Samantha by association. Needless to say, the villains led by a one-man killing machine Patrick Hoisinger haven't counted on Reacher's particular set of skills. My problem with the film after an entertaining opening is that the screenplay lumbers from standard thriller set piece to standard thriller set piece in a highly predictable way. It's as if the scripts from 20 different films have been stuck in a blender. Shadowy arms dealing shenanigans check. Cute teenager in peril check. Gunfight on a dockside check. Rooftop chase check. Are all the individual set pieces decently done? Yes, sure but the combination of these bits of action tuppas really don't add up to a satisfying meal. The story arc is almost non-existent, as there is no suspense in the investigation, the plot is all pretty well laid out for you. Where there is some fun to be had is in the playoff between the born leader, Reacher and the born leader Turner, both trying to be top dog in the decision making, the romantic connection between the leads seems almost plausible, despite their 20-20 year age difference. This is more down to how incredibly good Cruz still looks at age 54. Damn him, Turner makes a good female role. Model right up to the point where there is a confrontation in a hotel room and Turner backs down. Despite Cruz being the hero it would have been nice for female equality for this face-off to have gone the other way. The director is Edward Zwick, who helmed Cruz's more interesting movie The Last Samurai. The trailer started off well and then progressed into general mediocrity. Unfortunately for me at least the film lived up to the trailer. Watchable, but not memorable.